I, my feeling as a, as a member of the Movement for a Culture of Peace, which is a, a, a very broad-based group, you can just look around this room, uh, is that we're here to help. We want to help in any way we can. And we also have our own ideas about how things might go. So let's uh, uh, think of, for a moment about questions and, and raise your hand, I'll call on you. George, George Higgins from Delaware Coalition Against Gun Violence. Is there the possibility of pulling together a comprehensive plan that we could all work from that would deal with reduction of violence in the city of Wilmington? How can we as a community uh, literally be in the same book and on the same pages of all knowing who's doing what and how we can all work together to stop this action? Your question hits at the core of it, which is the role of the community. How can we make sure that this community is connected to the community on the east side that might be connected to the community in the north section. We have a west side plan, we have an east side plan, we have a, uh, a renaissance plan. Like there, there are all these great plans that are going on throughout the city, uh, but how do we connect them? How do we get the voices to be heard? And you're seeing everything that we kind of talked about is kind of leading towards that. And each step is, is another domino that is falling. So, Doug talked about the Violence Reduction Network, right? So the, the VRN is done with just that. That's the, the federal government coming in too and giving some of their expertise and, and their units. That is, um, that is a way to make committees. So just yesterday, was it yesterday? I'm losing track of time, Doug. Yesterday or the day before, we had our VRN. Thursday. Thursday. We had our uh, VRN meeting in which the skeleton of it that's being run by the city and you have everybody at the table, feds and state, city, all the different divisions, all the different people that are accounted for. And we say, all right, well, what kind of subcommittees do we need here to start addressing some of the core issues of violence? There was a re-entry subcommittee that was created at that meeting, and there was a community building part that was done there. And that's not something I want to gloss over. That's a very important section. In that community building thing, that's how we start to get people connected. But your group is, I'm very impressed. I mean, you, you all are here on a Saturday morning. You're here to talk about real issues that are going on. But the same passion that's here is also in other sections of the city. And you're hearing similar but different things in other sections of the city. I mean, the peacekeepers, you guys are all over the city, right? So I mean, you see the same thing. And we're all trying to grasp on how we best grab that. We don't have that answer yet, but I want to highlight that all of these movements, the, whether it's the VRN, whether it's our office creating a brand new unit so that we can even have these discussions, whether it's Wilmington Police Department or LNI or other people coming in and joining and literally walking lockstep in these uh, different analogies or cease violence, that we're starting to move towards that. So the city of Wilmington is involved in quite a few initiatives, um, one of which is as everybody should be aware, Wilmington was selected as one of the cities to be involved in what's called the VRN, which is the Violence Reduction Network. It is a federal program. Uh, Wilmington is one of five cities that was selected. And it doesn't come with resources or dollars, but what it does come with are experts in the field throughout the country that will look at what our specific issues are, our, our problems, and look throughout the country for the policies and strategies that have worked best, and bring them back here um, to help promote the strategies that we're looking forward to. Um, one of the things that they're going to do right out of the chute is there, there's going to be a staffing analysis done at the Wilmington Police Department. They'll look at what the current deployment strategies are and see how they should or could be modified. They've already come into the Police Department and done a complete evaluation of all of our technologies. Uh, and, and I mean a very comprehensive technology assessment, not just within the police department. We were able to include downtown visions, a lot of the camera systems that we have throughout the city. Um, we even looked at some of the other departments within the city government, such as like mapping, to see how we can utilize, take advantage of all the resources that we currently have and tie them together for crime analysis. Um, 
We took them to the DIAC, which is the fusion center for the state, which is where all of the intelligence goes. And we've looked at how the Wilmington Police can do better with contributing intelligence to that, to that unit that makes it accessible for all the different police agencies in the state, as well as the federal agencies. And um, they did a, a comprehensive evaluation of how we currently do our crime analysis. And unfortunately, the, the findings were that we're literally behind like 15 years with what everybody else is doing. So we have a huge uh, room for doing better with how we currently do crime analysis. As I started out by saying that uh, you know, it doesn't come with money or resources, but it, like I said, it does come with the experts who are able to literally roll out the red carpet for us to, to get to these resources. So it's through that that we're going to be able to change how we're currently doing our crime analysis. Um, there may be a few technology pieces that we need, uh, but overall we have the technology pieces, but we're not using them to their full advantage. Um, like I said, they're going to do a staffing evaluation, and they're going to come in with training in a lot of different areas, one of which is uh, one of the things that we're focusing on is case management with our investigators. Um, we want to increase our clearance rates, which are below the national average right now, and um, in, in some crimes, um, and probably the most important ones. And in addition to that, we want to do training with this homicide unit that was just recently created. Um, and we're going to bring in uh, expert detectives throughout the country that are going to work with our investigators, review a lot of the cases that they currently have, and see what we can do to get these cases back on track. One of the unique things what the city did was with, in creating this homicide unit was they incorporated a cold case unit uh, which is retired detectives, and these were guys who literally ran the detective division years ago. Um, what they have done is, is going through all of our cold cases, going back to the 70s, and looked at what follow-ups could be done. They looked at what technology advancements have been made. So in certain cases, there, uh, for example, in, in a case where there was viable DNA, but there wasn't any mechanism to process that. Now that there is, they're going back and submitting these cases. Um, so, you know, there's hopes of, of clearing out some of these very older cases because of some of the technologies that have, that have been developed. The city created a, uh, a cease violence model, which these gentlemen here are talking about. 